Hey guys, happy Labor Day weekend. Hope everybody is excited about an extra day off this week, coming week. Uh, I know I am. And I hope everybody's excited about the football season starting. Um, Thursday is going to be the first game. Um, so to so get ready, fantasy is, is upon us. Um, I was thinking about topics that, that we haven't gone over enough in, in depth yet. And, and one of those is, um, a trading concept I thought would be fun to, to dive into a little bit today. Um, and we'll see where it goes. Um, and hopefully this is useful for you guys. I watch a lot of, um, YouTube for, uh, dynasty content and, and, and try and, you know, pick out the things that I think is useful, uh, that some of these like vets of, of the dynasty community, uh, have to say. Um, and one of the things that is abundantly clear is, um, trading is like the lifeblood of dynasty football. You know, people love trading. People love talking about trades, you know, you, you Google dynasty trade, you know, you know, you'll get a ton of ton of people just just doing you know, different looking at different trades and talking about who won the trade, who what, what do you think about this trade and, and that trade? Um, and <clears throat> what what is pretty obvious to me is that a lot of these guys um look at trades a little differently than redraft and uh you know your usual trade in redraft um it doesn't have it, it doesn't work the same way as in dynasty um because of the age factor you know age plays a huge part in 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 dynasty and so that variable by itself really changes the calculus on if a trade is is good or not for a team. And um, one you know one thing I was thinking about is like our trades in previous years. You know, in our in our redraft leagues, um, you you think about most trades that we do, and it's usually like. <laughs> Um, there, there's a lot of, lot of two for ones that happen. You'll see, you'll see a lot of, a lot of people, um, try to do this two for one concept where it's like, I'm going to package two decent players for one, uh, you know, better player. Like that's the ideal situation. And you always want to be in redraft on the side of, uh, getting the one player for the most part. And you want to get the better player to maximize your, your starting lineup. And while that's still true in Dynasty, things change quite a bit, <laughs> and that's because of age. Um, you know, getting two players isn't nearly as bad in Dynasty, and uh, honestly, it seems like to me, after you know doing my research over the past year, that that it's preferable to get more assets than 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 less. Um, I don't know that's kind of a silly way of putting it, but, um, you know, people don't like to be the ones getting the big, you know, big name player in the trade. They like to get two smaller, you know, pieces that, that maybe turn into something. And uh, just an example of that, like, what would it take? You know, we'll, let's turn like Superflex off. What would it take to get Jonathan Taylor in our league you know what what's the what's the price of jonathan taylor you can see his value is nine nine eight zero i thought it'd be nine 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 is that jamar chase i don't even know where our rankings are right now and keep trade cut but it, this is a lot the highest you can go is nine 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 so what yeah it looks like jamar chase is a nine 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 okay so what do you have to give up to get this uh Jonathan Taylor from from somebody so I think you have to start with something pretty big right like you'd have to be getting let's just say like a Najee Harris back in a trade okay well what do we what else do we have to add to our trade to even it up well this is crazy down here this is crazy so it says players to even the trade and it's like 
T. Higgins, Mark Andrews, Cooper Cup. So you you have to give away. Not only are you giving away a stud in Najee, who's just not as much of a stud as Jonathan Taylor, but you also have to give up another one, right? Two two awesome players. So let's say Mark Andrews. Whoa! All of a sudden, uh, you know, keep trade cut is saying this is a fair trade. I mean, what gives here? So we weren't that far off with Najee. We were like two thousand, you know, fifteen hundred in value away. But then when I added Mark Andrews, all of a sudden they're adding a ton of value um, on the Jonathan Taylor. So what does this even mean? This this value adjustment thing that they just showed us. What is, what is that? Um, well, so it says. Trading is more than simple addition. We add value to the side of the trade that's giving up more when you look at roster spots, players, stud factor, etc. This is the way of countering as much as possible trade calculations that say 12 third round picks are a fa fair deal for DeAndre Hopkins. And so that's that's a really good point, right? Like you can't start 12 third round picks uh, in, your, in, in your starting lineup and they take up roster space. So that's not a fair trade for for DeAndre Hopkins. They're not, they're unlikely to ever score as many points as DeAndre Hopkins. So we have to have this value adjustment thing. But look at this trade: giving up Najee and then giving up Mark Andrews. This is a top five tight end. You know, some argue tight end number one. Um, I think Pitts takes the tight end one spot in in dynasty rankings right now, just because he's so young. Mark Andrews, he's twenty six. Um, so we don't need to look at his his value and all that stuff. But we've got Najee, a 24 year old running back. Taylor's only a year younger, but you know, the situation for Jonathan Taylor is just amazing. He's got a great offensive line. He's got probably the best quarterback that Indianapolis has had in forever. Um, and so he's going to be safe, dependable, awesome. Uh, you know what you're getting here. Najee, he, he's, he's still really good, but, He's very inefficient, I would say, because that offensive line is 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 garbage. Um, but he's he's obviously really really good. So look at how much you have to give up for Jonathan Taylor, um, and it's pretty pretty insane. Um, it's it, it's a lot to to trade up you you're you're gutting your roster in, in some ways and if we were just like to try and do this with picks and a lesser known player like let's say let's say we wanted i'm um, lesser known but let's uh lesser value player so let's take saquon and then just like add picks to this let's see what happens so 2023 mid first oh that's still in jonathan taylor's direction 2024 mid first Okay, so Saquon Barkley plus two future draft picks. Keep trade cut saying that's pretty even. That's pretty even. It still favors um, the side getting Jonathan Taylor overall. That's crazy, right? So you could get two firsts. This could get you, you know, Drake London, Garrett Wilson, and Saquon Barkley. Um, these draft picks are what keeps your team alive, uh, year over year. And, and you're willing to trade all that plus somebody who could realistically score as much as Jonathan Taylor. I mean, Saquon's had his injuries, but he, at one point was the best running back in the league. Uh, his rookie year was amazing. So you really have to gut your roster to, uh, get these studs and in in redraft you don't worry about these things you know you, you just start your your best players and if trading for a stud makes sense that's great but um you're trading away your future here you're 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 gambling with your future and hoping that the extra points that jonathan taylor scores over saquon barkley is worth it for your team and so that's where this concept comes in that the dynasty community like absolutely loves and this is a concept called tearing down and we've just shown it here uh in an example with this jonathan taylor trade so maybe you're pretty high on saquon barkley and 
you feel like uh, you could trade your stud away for for Saquon and and some firsts, like, and still get really solid production out of that running back position, and you know, solidify your future here with these picks. People like trades like this. They like the package here um, most of the time over the stud. Now, um, I would you know caution people to actually trade away a guy like Jonathan Taylor because it's just like, why you found the best player in the league, you know, just keep him and score a bunch of points and win championships. Saquon's not even close to guaranteed to a sure thing, but this is where the idea of tears comes into play and like your risk appetite, your um, belief in a player, you know, uh, and, and uh, this is a really hard part that, Maybe you're not spending a ton of time on, but uh, the dynasty community um, here can can help you. They have these things called tiers, um, and and if we look at, let's look at all players so you can see how the tiers look. Um, what we mean when we talk about a tier are players that you like just about the same, right? Um, you would be pretty indifferent to having Justin Jefferson on your team or uh, Jonathan Taylor in, in, in Dynasty or Jamar Chase. Like those guys are kind of interchangeable for most of the Dynasty community. And so they're all grouped in the same tier because their values are about the same. And if you go on Keep Trade Cut, you'll even see these little lines here, these brackets that, that um, you know, group these guys together. But there is a tier column, and so you can say tier two is Kyle Pitts all by himself. And you've got to keep in mind that a lot of people play in a tight end premium league. And so when they're answering these questions, I think that they've they've got tight end premium on their mind. So this is why you see Kyle Pitts like way, way up here. And it's not to say that Kyle Pitts isn't great, but I think in our league without a tight end premium, you'd be hard pressed to to like pick him over Swift, Harris. Javante, Christian McCaffrey, maybe you want him over CD Lamb, uh, but I don't know. That's just me, personal preference. Uh, I don't know. CD seems pretty good, but is he is he that amazing? I'm not sure. I think there's a big gap between CD and uh, these guys up here, like Jefferson and Chase. Um, so that's. That's the idea of tiers. Or they're, they're guys you value about the same. You'd be indifferent to having these guys on your team. And what this can do is that when, you, when you've got those tiers in your head, it really helps you uh, with your, your trades. Like maybe there's people who value, let's look at tier three here because it's huge, right? Uh, maybe there's people here in our league who value um, DeAndre Swift you know, a ton more than Cooper Cup, right? And you could trade DeAndre Swift for Cooper Cup and get some stuff back, like Cooper Cup plus some more stuff, uh, like a pick or whatever. And maybe that works out for your team. Uh, it's a lot harder with these really, you know, strong players, like the top 15 players to do, you know, kind of tier in the same tier trades. But you get further down and and the tiers get a little bigger here, you know, like tier four. Um, we've got, you know, AJ Brown and uh, Brees Hall or Debo Samuel. You know, these guys, they're, they're all in the same tier. You some people might value them a lot more than than you do. And, and you can get a player you like more in the same tier. Now, the concept of, of tiering down that I kind of led with um is pretty uh much what it sounds like um when you when you do a trade you look at your tier list and you say okay i would be comfortable trading this guy and tiering down to like a tier lower or a tier lower than that and and then getting some some more stuff back and so that's that would be something like we talked about earlier, like Jonathan Taylor is in tier one. And then we've got to kind of scroll down here to Saquon Barkley. He's in tier five. And so you have to ask yourself, are you comfortable at least just using the tiers here? 
are you comfortable going that far down um and 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 still getting the production that you want in your your starting running back spot um is it worth it in terms of the picks that you you get or the extra players that you get in that trade um how does it how does it help your starting lineup or your future uh, maybe you're just thinking about the future um and yeah that's that's pretty much it you know this is a, this is a pretty big jump in terms of tiers like going down four tiers you know i think people prefer to go down like one or two tiers at most when they're talking about these kind of tier down trades but uh it's an interesting idea i would say more often than not it 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 works well when you're trading between a rebuilder and a competitor. So um, you're trading guys with current production now, such as like an Austin Eckler for guys who maybe are going to produce in the future, like Travis Etienne or Drake London, somebody like that. Someone who hasn't shown anything yet, uh, but has, we know has the talent. Um, so you, those trades tend to happen a lot more, um, but uh, between like you know the rebuilder getting getting the young player and 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 getting picks or getting whatever uh, as compensation for for their stud who you know isn't doing anything for their team if they're not making the playoffs, and that's that's the um, thing I've been preaching uh, quite a bit with trades, um, you know these these trades you're you're better off getting more things that than less especially if you're especially if you're rebuilding um uh, you know giving up current production now for a young player you don't you don't want to trade a player that's producing now for someone who might produce like that's not a good business to be in um you want to do that you want to get multiple chances at someone who might produce like who knows what Travis Etienne is going to do. I think we've all got a pretty good idea that he's, he's very talented, but who knows what that offense is going to look like. Oh, there's a lot of questions there. You know, who knows what James Robinson is going to do. Um, so when you trade for a guy like Etienne, you should get something back. If you're trading Austin Eckler away for Travis Etienne, you should get something back like a future pick or, you know, a young player, another young player that fits your timeline, like an Elijah Moore or something like that. Um, maybe that person hasn't produced much either, but has shown a little promise in the NFL. Um, but that that should be your strategy as a rebuilder. Don't just trade kind of one for one. Get, get min as many cracks at um, finding a star as you possibly can that's what that's the business that you should be in and even when you're 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 trading on on a competitive possibly competitive team that's that's usually the way you want to go um that 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 leads to more success so always ask for an extra pick in a trade things like that to even it out um hopefully this was helpful uh let me know if you've got questions and uh, good luck with your trading, everybody, and don't trade it all away too early. Uh, try and see how your team is doing, but I know everybody's itching to to get into to trading. So, uh, yeah, let me know if you got questions. See you guys.